Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, rapidly overclocking every component I can get my hands on in order to survive the coming winter. And it is time for episode 23, that's right, this time I checked, of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. And today I'm going to break with my previous plan to some extent, and instead of wandering around uh, picking up random bits of stuff and thinking to myself, hey, what's this thing? What does it mean? What does it do? What does it imply about this place? Which I now realize I haven't actually been doing with most of the garbage I've been, been picking up. I've just been reading it and then moving on. But um, yeah, so today we're going to go pick up an entirely different piece of garbage. One of the ruling members of the ruling class of this society. Well, I suppose not one of the ruling members since that was the uh, council and they're all dead, probably. Unlocked. Dead Nebula. More refreshing than a cosmic apocalypse. Sounds familiar. Did we have that one already? Uh, but yeah, so this is the Syndicate apartment block, which is the apartments where the upper class of society get to live. Um... I think before we go talk to Witness, I briefly want to attempt to describe part of what I was trying to say last episode, which is basically that I can't stand it um, when it when the existence of crime is taken as some kind of um, elemental natural component, something inescapable about the nature of reality. You know, it's talked about as if it's some kind of disease which exists and can be managed or mitigated in various different ways, but it's just something that you have to kind of put up with when you're running a society. And I think that that is really untrue and either naive or directly playing into uh, the underlying assumptions about society that uh, People who do not have your best interests at heart want you to keep maintaining. Ill-fated, pleading letter. A mother pleads for mercy. Her son transgressed. Love between the Syndicate and citizens is expressly forbidden. But that's not the case at all, you know? Um, it's just a list of things that the people in charge say are not allowed. Um, and that list can change, and frequently does change. Um, and it <laughs> rarely are the things on it actually for the benefit of individual citizens, let's put it that way. So, um, I kind of just can't stand it when, when stories are written as if, as if crime exists in some kind of almost physical sense. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Um, which is a lie because I also think it's worth mentioning that, like, I'm not naive enough to think that, you know, if some kind of glorious socialist revolution happened tomorrow and, uh, you know, we all suddenly started living in a society where everyone had enough to eat and shelter enough shelter, then suddenly all of the things that we now consider crimes would disappear. But there would be no logic in making most of them be con considered to be crimes, certainly. Um, and I don't think violence would disappear. I think people will always fight over stupid shit. <laughs> but people are less likely to fight over stupid shit if they don't have a whole bunch of other horrible stresses happening in their lives. That's my that's that's my possibly naive opinion on 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 that. Um, right. So what's this over here? Relic obtained. Ultimate tea. Genmaicha is the best tea. Anyone who says different is a liar or has not tried it. That's a straight fact. Ah, well, I'm a bit less interested in that and more interested in who painted this. This is uh, this is the si the uh, syndicate housing block. So it's where the, the uh, ruling people live, which means that it was one of them who painted this, presumably. Maybe this was Kahax. After all, he's the one who's obsessed with, uh, with Crimson Acid. But it doesn't seem itself to be evidence relating to anything. I feel like there's uh, probably more secrets to find lying around, but I can't oh. hear them. I like the idea of the average detective having, you know, a nose to sniff out secrets is usually how it's characterised. But uh, Lady Love Dies can literally hear stuff. 
All right, Shinji, what's up? I feel like I could talk to you all day, love dies. What's on your mind? Everything, nothing, you know how it is. Feeling quite relaxed. You're the only one on this island that is. That's why you're in this situation. Too many people take things too seriously. They don't think about others, just their own advancement. That isn't how a perfect society runs. Do you come from a perfect society? <laughs> you don't get this attitude and charming personality unless you come from a place where everyone in the government is looking to scapegoat you for their own cruelty and fuck-ups. You personally? Of course not me personally, the lower classes. No time to chat, things to do. But I thought you said... Hmm, interesting and weird. But again, this seems to reflect the, uh... Like, thematic thrust of this game being, um... Misery makes people do crimes and society makes people miserable. Rather than the idea that crime... Kind of doesn't exist in any sense further than, like, people deciding it to exist. Which... If that continues to be a core underlying theme of this game, it's going to bother me all the way through because it's kind of got the right idea, but still accepting the premise of the question in the first place instead of uh, refuting or at least interacting with it. Don't simply take it as read that society has to be one way or another. And um, sometimes I just feel defeated, you know? How do you pick yourself back up? Oh, my planet, there's this musician I like. Creates music that takes me away to another place. That sounds nice. I have a musician like that as well. Uninterested, love dies. This conversation is about me. Whatever, I'm gonna smash some bottles or something. Oh my god, I wish I could live like that. Every time I talk to Shinji, I'm like, <gasps> Shinji says what I... What, what we're all thinking. Hooray. Anyway. Well, not says what we're all thinking, but Shinji definitely has a certain attitude and like mode of life that I find extremely appealing. Can I, can I jump all the way over here to talk to... Oh, oh, hell yeah. That's parkour, baby. I mean, I should probably take the elevator up at some point just to see what happens. I wonder if he'll be surprised by me coming in through this particularly dynamic method. Well loved secateurs, a craftsperson tools are a thing of beauty. The grip has been worn into the perfect fit for the user's hands over years of use. Alright, let's see, what other, what other small, unconsidered trifles can I pick up and squirrel away? Polite luxury chocolates, the standard gift given to the host when syndicate members vi visit each other. Can I give him back his own chocolates? I wonder if I can get into anyone else's apartments from here, actually. Oh, hello. Yeah, we'll definitely have a look in Witness's apartment in a moment after we talk to Witness himself first off. Yet another really lovely character design with some questionable, um, just questionable, like, anatomy on the part of the artist. But, like, good Goodness gracious, that's definitely a look. Witness to the end. Overseer of the end of the islands. Under the gaze of the gods, the so-called investigation freak returns to the island sequences. Witness to the end. Overseer of each dying paradise. Born in the Chaos Palace in northern Iran in AD 981 under the sign of destroyed Eden. As a child, Witness was enslaved under the banner of crying grudge and put to work building the perpetually growing Chaos Palace in northern Persia. During the Great Betrayal, Witness refused to budge in his devotion, fleeing to hide within the impossible labyrinth of the Chaos Palace. Ezekiel found Witness and urged him to follow him. They became close. Witness was still a young man, and Ezekiel older and wiser. Witness looked up to him as a father figure after being taken from his own father at a young age. Witness holds a great deal of responsibility, overseeing the end of an island. He ensures every failure is perfect. He collects and breeds rare plants in his penthouse. Good to see you again, Witness. Apologies for Starlight, I do remember you. How long has it been since you last did work for our holy masters? Time moves so strangely here, we are grains of sand that drift in the astral wake of the heavenly titans. Especially after last night, the island is ready to end. The time flow is broken, the gods are displeased. We are supposed to be their loyal servants, our only purpose to resurrect them. 
Now we squabble and scheme, our holy work brought to screeching halt by murder. The end times are looming, so many have strayed from the path, this must be a sign from the gods. I mean, he's a true believer, so I feel like if I should say something... I feel like I should say something zealous to get him on side and tell me more things. But... There is something curious about the nature of truth and lies in video games, which I will try to remember to talk about a bit later on. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to take my own actual opinion, and Lady Love Dies' opinion by extension. The gods are capricious idiots. Another sinner fallen from the light and into heresy just like the rest of this island. We're devoted to them, but I don't think they're righteous. I'm here to weave truth, not to do their work. You have forgotten our holy purpose as well. Too many have. What's with the holy proclamations? This isn't your usual style. Far too much has happened in your absence. Truths have become more mutable. Our masters are not being served. The syndicate has lost its way. I have not strayed from the path. Too many of us have forgotten what it means to serve our masters. I fear last night was a punishment. Or maybe a divine reminder. Our gods work in esoteric ways. Are you here to punish the wicked monster that committed this atrocity? The sinner that allowed demons onto the island, will he burn in the fire of justice? How are you feeling about losing your jurisdiction? Judge has no right. It just proves how far this island has fallen. A holy man should be allowed to do his holy work. Now how can I assist you with your holy work? Time to ask 10 million goddamn questions. I'm gonna uh, check alibis first, because they're normally a lot faster. Did you see the Grand Marshal last night? I spoke to her when she reported Henry's escape, but I did not see her until the crisis meeting after the killer was arrested. I keep her said she called you at the time of the murder. She did, but something is troubling me about it. I am seeking guidance from those in the stars about how to proceed. If I say anything, it may be misconstrued. I'm a professional. You can tell me anything. Let me ponder on it. Where were you last night? I spent the night here, in my apartment. By yourself? The architect came to visit me, a rare social call. She was with me at the time of the killings. We left when we were summoned to the crisis meeting. Fair enough, that tallies with what other people have said. Some romance at the end of an island? That period of our lives is long gone, investigator. Was there anything odd about her behaviour? We had a pleasant time. We shared some wine I'd been saving and prepared to say goodbye to paradise. And you two were in each other's company all evening? I stepped onto my balcony to take a phone call from Grand Marshal Aikiko. It was fleeting. No more than five minutes. What time was this call? Shortly before death visited the island. Aikiko was reporting the escape of Henry. Well, we know that there was only like eight minutes between his escape and the murders. Oh no, yeah, and the murders, and then like 11 minutes before his, his escape and being caught. So that's a really narrow window. It does match what Akiko told her, but it also matches what someone else told us about how he never takes a phone call with someone else in the same room. Not long after, marshals were stationed outside the elevator to my apartment. Do you have any proof that you were both in your apartment? The nightmare computer at the entrance logs everyone that enters and exits. You can pull the records from that and check yourself. Why is yours the only apartment with a logging system? You can't be too careful. I take my privacy seriously. Paranoia. Got it. Thank you for your cooperation. So there's something a little bit odd about that because... <laughs> I think that this is something that the developers maybe just didn't think of, but um, I can reach the roof of this place without needing to use the elevator. Additionally, anyone from the top of the elevator of, of this rooftop can jump off and go to the bottom. We weren't told that being immune to falling damage is a unique property of Lady Love Dies. We were told that it's the nature of the islands that nobody that you just you don't get hurt from falling from high places in this place. Which means that anything dictating that someone must have entered or left by the front door is flawed if that building has a roof. Like, I mean, I feel like detective fiction number one, like, 
Detective Fiction 101 is like learning to make plot points like, well, just because we know they didn't go out of the door doesn't mean they didn't go out one of the many windows or in this instance, dive off the roof. Tell me about the moment the council died. I know you suffer from psychic death screams. Doom Jazz can't be trusted with patient confidentiality around you. Yes, every time a person dies, I'm assailed by their psychic death scream echoing into space. Doom Jazz prescribes me medication for it. Did you suffer from death scream trauma when they died? Yes, I was assailed by the psychic death screams of the council. I was brought to my knees by the pain. Interesting. We do know that psychic death screams can be f falsified, though, which could possibly fit my vague theory that the council aren't dead. <laughs> You know, one of my 15 theories about what's going on. Did you see Yuri last night? He is secretary to the architect. Have you spoken to her? Well, I mean, we knew that. Alright, what about the architect herself? I don't know what to tell you other than what I have already said. She came to spend the evening with me here. If you want to know what she did before that, you need to ask her. Did you see Crimson last night? I didn't see her loved eyes. Did you see the doctor last night? The doctor claimed to be in his clinic all night. Well, we already know that his back door is busted, so... <laughs> we already know that his back door is busted, and also that uh, the rear entry to... Man, is there any way to refer to the, like, behind access of a building that doesn't sound dirty? Anyway, we all know we, we already know that, like, that doesn't mean anything. Is there anything else you can tell me about Henry's movements last night? The monster's movements have been recorded by the Grand Marshal. Did you see Lydia and Sam last night? Speak to Yuri, he's her handler. Well, we also knew that already. Okay. So it looks like I can't ask him for his phone records, which is a shame because that phone call might be relevant. What do you know about Henry's demonic possession ten years ago? Henry is a curse on us all. His possession ten years ago condemned the island. There is nothing else to know. The dead zone is our reminder of his crime. Yeah, funny that. Uh, can I ask you about your weird, creepy dead zone secret lab where you were studying demons? How about that, huh? Do you know anything about the murder of the martial guards outside of the council building? Is this case not open and closed? Do you believe there is more? Have you scoured the council building? I mean... I did, didn't I? Maybe I should have another look. What do you know about Henry's escape? Only what the Grand Marshal told us. Have you spoken with her? Witness, I need to talk to you. What do you know about this device that I found? It looks like it records the death screams you suffer from and replays them. It's been fitted with a directional speaker that allows them to be targeted. I found it pointed at Henry's cell. Doomjaz hypothesized that someone possessed by a demon would be agitated by it and have an adrenaline spike. It sounds perfect for whipping Henry into a frenzy when Aikiko went to execute him, giving him a chance to escape. The death screams are torture. I would never inflict them on another. So you're denying it? Of course. There's no evidence that I placed or used the device. Well, yeah, but you might have been involved in their recording. And also, uh, we know that he thinks that um, Henry Division deserves to be slaughtered. So is it any, any further... Like, it's not much of a conjecture to think that he might want have, might have wanted to hurt Henry. What do you know about the second Holy Seal? Nothing, Lady Love Dies. It is a mystery to everyone on the island. Well, what do you know about Kahax's disappearance? Nothing. He often went for periods of isolation. Sorry, I can't help more. Witness, do you think anyone has a motive for killing the council? This island is full of sinners. Our holy mission has been left unattended for too long. Any number of sinners here could have done it. Perhaps it was an act of the gods. Heavenly anger leads to heavenly smiting. Tell me about the sinners. This island crawls with them. They pay lip service to the gods, but they do not follow our sacred mission. The island sequences have degenerated. They used to be righteous, and now I despair. What about the accused? Henry is a citizen, not a syndicate member. 
Citizens are sinners too. They do not pray hard enough. The syndicate do not compel them to pray hard enough. The citizens grow restless, insubordinate, and dissent spreads. This one let demons onto the island. Why stop there? I mean, that's a good story, but it's too good. Someone wants to pin this on a citizen, and we are too ready to accept it. We cannot conceive the esoteric ways the gods work. Another easy story. You're questioning the gods? Higher powers rarely provide the answers we need. I'm not questioning the gods, also, I'm questioning you. Like, just because you think you know what the gods are up to doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Do you believe Henry is responsible? All I can do is trust in the gods and have faith that what happened was a part of their divine will. But do you believe Henry did it? It is not for me to question the gods. Okay, well, he's absolutely refusing to give me a straight answer there, for some reason. Alright, what about your own motive? I am a humble servant striving to live on the righteous path. Murdering the council is not on that path. Am I taking your word for that? What reason would I have to kill the council? How does that benefit our holy mission? Who determines the path? The gods, of course. Did the gods want you to kill the council? Don't be ridiculous. Well, why were you butting heads with Montserrat so much? What does that have to do with anything? I need to know why someone was clashing with a murder victim. Our leader was not following the holy mission. His focus was on the island sequences and not on the gods. Did you kill him for being a sinner? Of course not. I'm a holy servant. I may not have agreed with his plans, but he was our leader. You voted against every proposal he put forward. That is the point of our democratic meetings. We all have a say on the direction of the syndicate. His direction veered from our holy mission and I voiced my disagreement. What kind of proposals were they? Advancement towards the so-called Perfect 25. I don't care about our new home being perfect. The gods are not there to celebrate with us. Look out onto the ocean of madness. So many pyramids sit empty. 24 island sequences and we have only one resident. We are capable of so much more. Well, why haven't we done more? Montserrat had other plans. Grand resurrections could wait until the island sequences were solved. What is the point of Perfect 25 if the gods remain in pain? I wanted to remind Montserrat of the Syndicate's purpose, so I voted against everything. He and the rest of the council put forward. Did you remind him with a knife? Absolutely not. Why have you started taking calls in private? Why is this anyone's business? Are you hiding something? Plotting? Don't be ridiculous. Wanna chat? I must warn you that I am not one for long conversations. Well, that's fine. The gods are watching us. Do you think they're happy with what they see? What's with the zealot thing you've got going on? The gods are radiant and this island does not bask in their light. I came to realize this and now live only to serve them. Please tell me you also devote yourselves to the holy masters. I am a servant of the gods, but I have a job to do. Everything is secondary to holy work. The recent bloodbath says otherwise. Please join me in prayer. He journeyed across the stars. He came to us and gifted so much. He was the first, the holy catalyst. Man's dark age was scorched by the fires of devotion. In the face of sin and heresy, I sing for Silent Goat. He heard us in the crystal caves. He will hear us again. The first, the holy catalyst, Silent Goat. May we always walk with you. Maybe another time, witness. I pray that you do not fall into sin. Ting. May you fly with destroyed Eden. And may you reach the moon. Interesting. So, uh, that's about to be it for today. Next time, we're going to rummage around in here and then see if we if we can uh, ferret out anything else we have to say. And then it's going to be time to start revisiting people and locations. I'm going to crack open as many computers as I can gather up as much evidence I can and then go talk to everyone one final time and uh, see how much information I can, you know, enthusiastically glean by doing so. But uh, before that, I kind of want to say it feels a bit weird to me that this guy is implicitly like Middle Eastern, right? And the white British developers of this game have chosen the one Middle Eastern character to be the one who is a religious zealot, which, like, that feels weird and uncomfortable, and I'm, I'm not sure about that decision. Um, 
There's nothing wrong with being religious, uh, but like, I don't think we should play into stereotypes, is what I'm getting at. And I could probably have phrased that more better, but whatever. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join me again next time and we will start uh, cracking open computer puzzles. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.